Even the end of the so-called SVO will not be a liberation for Russian military personnel. No one will let them retire. Russian z -War correspondent Alexander Zladkov, who is close to the Kremlin, spoke frankly about this. According to him, the soldiers are so fed up with this bloody war that immediately after its end, mass dismissals from the army will begin. For the Kremlin, this will be a disaster. What will happen to the guys after the end of the SVO? And who will serve? A lot of men are planning to retire, professional soldiers. They've had their fill of trenches and all that. After the war, they'll be driven to the training ground. And rightly so. We need to raise a new army, a new type of army. And people will start to retire. And who will serve? The conscripts? Those with life sentences will reach the rank of general. I don't think they'll let everybody go at once. We'll have a problem with commanders then, Sladkov said. It should be noted that today there are no signs that Russian President Vladimir Putin wants to end the war. On the contrary, his army is persistently trying to advance and he is issuing unacceptable ultimatums to Kyiv to capitulate. Recall Russia's offensive in eastern Ukraine has been particularly bloody with US intelligence reports of casualty numbers of up to 1,000 per day dead and wounded. This calls to mind the meat grinder tactics of previous Russian and Soviet military campaigns. The meat grinder is a collective battlefield approach that values high troop density and intensity to overwhelm the enemy. It is a uniquely Russian approach, nine decades in the making, consisting of a combination of two much older strategies, namely attrition and mass mobilization. At the heart of attrition is the notion of abundance. The opponent is physically and psychologically exhausted by the sheer force of numbers as wave after wave of cannon fodder are relentlessly deployed. Mass mobilization is the large-scale movement of troops to a particular location with the intention of overpowering the adversary. Neither approach recognizes the intrinsic value of individual lives. The meat grinder became embedded in Soviet military tactics. The phrase, quantity has a quality of its own, has apocryphal roots in Stalin's leadership during the Second World War. Key battles, such as Stalingrad and Kursk, involved the deployment of millions of soldiers, and the Soviet army eventually crushed the Nazi Blitzkrieg through sheer weight of numbers on the Eastern Front. By October 28, 5,000 North Korean soldiers are set to be deployed to the Kursk region. These are likely troops from the so-called elite unit, according to the New York Times. On October 23, the first North Korean troops arrived in the Kursk region, with thousands more arriving each day since. Informed sources in Ukraine stated that by October 28, around 5,000 North Korean troops will be gathered in the Kursk region. According to the source, the troops are part of an elite unit of the Korean People's Army. They are being transported from Vladivostok on large Ilyushin IL-76 transport planes to a military airfield in western Russia and then taken to the combat zone. Currently, North Korean troops are concentrated only in the Kursk region. It is noted that the North Korean soldiers have not yet engaged in combat. It remains unclear what role they will play on the front lines. The NYT adds that it is uncertain how the North Korean military will affect the dynamics on the battlefield. North Korean forces have not participated in any war since the 1950s, raising questions about the capabilities of even their elite units. North Korea has sent troops to Russian territory. Intelligence reports indicate they have undergone training at four training grounds. The reported number of North Korean troops varies. Western intelligence and South Korea estimate about 3,000 North Korean soldiers in Russia. Ukrainian intelligence claims that North Korea has sent around 12,000 troops to Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that the first North Korean soldiers would arrive in the combat zone on October 27th to 28th.
Israeli military video released on Sunday claims to show soldiers raiding bunkers and finding stockpiled weapons in southern Lebanon. In a statement, the Israeli military said that its troops continue conducting limited, localized, targeted ground raids based on precise intelligence in southern Lebanon. They said that they eliminated dozens of terrorists, raided terrorist infrastructure above and below ground, and located numerous munitions and weapons. Israel has intensified bombardment of Lebanon since September 23, vowing to cripple Hezbollah, which began firing into northern Israel after Hamas' October 7 attack triggered the war in Gaza. Israel says it is targeting Hezbollah members and infrastructure and says the group places military assets in civilian areas. Some 2,000 people have been killed, including Hezbollah fighters and commanders, but also hundreds of civilians, often in strikes on homes. The exchange of fire has raised fears of an all-out regional war pitting Israel and the United States against Iran and its militant proxies, which include Hamas and the Hezbollah militant group in Lebanon, where Israel launched a ground invasion earlier this month after nearly a year of lower-level conflict. בתוך הסבך, ממש בתוך היער. נמצא המתחם הזה. נכון, נמצא מצבור אמלח מאוד גדול. בנוי מבוטן. Yeah.